Pastor Ed here with Daily Devotions for Tuesday, May the 9th, 2023. This week we're going to be looking at um, the readings from Romans that, uh, well, the, the first one was this past Sunday and in the next for the next three weeks, which is kind of going to bring to the close the, the, the regular narrative lectionary. We're going to do some other things this summer. <clears throat> but we're going to have like this little mini um, uh, sermon series and therefore Daily Devotions. Uh, on Paul's letter to the Romans, probably his most uh, famous theological work. Um, in my sermon on Sunday, I described uh, these first 17 verses as kind of a, uh, uh, a uh, or at least the initial, well, really the whole thing as kind of a cover letter, uh, because this is a congregation he didn't have a hand in creating or, or, or starting, whatever. He's, he's introducing himself to them. And he does that, of course, uh, by talking about um, his qualifications in verse 1 of chapter 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God. Um, and so I talked about um, cover letters and some hilarious ones. Here's a, here's a couple of others. Um, one fellow wrote, um, he's looking for an ideal business position, paying somewhere between eighteen and $250,000. Uh, his experiences from 1996 to the present, he was in Business Incorporated, whatever that means, Vice President of Impressive Business Dealings, outsourcing and in-buying, overseeing important industry, burning the midnight oil. From 92 to 95, he was at the newspaper, uh, reporter, wrote lots of articles, took excellent photographs, won Pulitzer, misspelled, prize, and donated it to charity. Additional experience, uh, fiber optics, PowerPoint, um, acting commissioner of his fantasy football league. Education, Yale, Harvard, Oxford, DeVry, holds degrees in business running and profit making. Uh, interests, works, putting work, putting in overtime, not drinking, smoking, doing anything else that would increase the company's health care costs. I do enjoy reading business magazines and upselling. References unavailable because they were all burned up in a fire. Uh, yeah, not a very good one. Somebody else uh, once wrote, um, my name is blank blank. I'll do whatever you want me to do for less money than whoever you're paying uh, to do it now. Okay. But the best one was a fellow who wrote to uh, J.P. Morgan. My oldest daughter used to work for them. He said, dear sir or madam, I'm an ambitious undergraduate at NYU triple majoring in mathematics, economics, computer science. I'm punctual, personable, and a shrewd individual, yet I have a quality which I pride myself on more than any of these. I'm unequivocally the most unflaggingly hard worker I know, and I love self-improvement. I've always felt that my time should be spent wisely, so I continually stretch, challenge myself. I left Villanova because the work was too easy. Once I realized I could achieve a perfect GPA while holding a part-time job at NYU, I decided to redouble my effort by placing out of two classes, taking two hour two honors classes, and holding no two two part time jobs, that semester I achieved a three point nine three GPA, and in the same time managed to bench uh, double my body weight and do thirty five pull ups. I say these things only because solid evidence is more convincing than unverifiable statements, and I want to demonstrate that I'm a hard worker. J P Morgan is a firm with a reputation that precedes itself. Employees who represent only the best and brightest in finance. I know that the employees in this firm will push me to excellence, especially within the investment banking division. In fact, one of the supporting reasons I chose investment banking over any other division was that I know it's difficult. I hope to augment my character by diligently working for the professionals at J.P. Morgan. I feel I have much to offer in return. Uh, please realize that I am not a braggart uh, or conceited. I just want to outline my usefulness. Egos can be a huge liability, and I try not to have one. Thank you so much for your time. I look forward to hearing from you. Uh, doesn't have an ego? That's was dripping in that in that letter. Um, Paul had, was no shrinking violet himself. Uh, I'm reminded of something that he once wrote in Philippians, but I think it goes to the heart of, of who he was. Um, in Philippians 3, beginning at verse 4, he says, Even though I too have reason for confidence in the flesh, um, if anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Okay. Circumcised on the eighth day 
a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. All right, so uh, he's really kind of laying it on kind of thick there. However, Paul says, yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord, for his sake I have suffered the loss of all things. I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and to be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. So Paul, again, no shrinking violet, not immune to uh, tooting his own horn, so to speak. But then he makes a complete about face and says, yeah, but this doesn't mean anything. This doesn't amount to anything. It's rubbish. Um, interesting. Paul putting faith in Christ, knowing Christ, um, at the very top uh, of his list of accomplishments and dreams and desires. Um, good model for all of us to follow as well. Well, we'll continue our talk about Romans 1, 1 to 17 tomorrow. Until then, take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.